This presentation is about how to find impedance in RLC circuits. RLC stands for circuits that have resistance, inductance, and capacitance. So these are complicated circuits and they involve alternating current at a certain frequency. So the first thing we need to have is our circuit to analyze. So here it is, we have a schematic. It shows us our voltage is 12 volts, root mean squared, RMS, uh, at a frequency of 10 kilohertz. We have a resistor of 33 ohms, capacitor of 1 microfarad, and an inductor of 1 millihenry. And what we want to do is analyze this circuit so we can determine things like current that's passing through these components and, and uh, make sure that we don't uh, have too much current or, or too high of a voltage to blow these out. Make sure it's a, a good workable circuit. Okay, one of the problems is capacitors and inductors respond differently when you have alternating current. Capacitors act like there's no problem at all when you have alternating current. They just love it. Current flows through just fine. The higher the frequency, the better. However, at low frequencies, and especially DC current, uh, capacitors act like they, they block that completely. Very high resistance to that. Instead of using the term re resistance, we call it reactance. They react to that. On the other hand, inductors, think of an inductor as just a coil of wire. So if it's just a wire, current can flow through that just fine. However, as the frequency increases, the magnetic field builds up. Uh, and then when the current tries to reverse direction, the collapsing magnetic field uh, makes it hard and tries to keep the current flowing in the other direction. And, and so they, they don't like that. So for inductors, the higher the frequency, the worse they get at passing current. They react badly to high frequencies. So we are going to call reactance is a, is a phenomenon like a resistance that opposes current in the circuit. The next step we need to calculate both capacitive reactance and inductive reactance. Our formula for capacitive reactance, we're going to use X for reactance and X sub C represents capacitive reactance. Our formula is going to be 1 over 2 pi F C. Now the 2 pi comes from the fact that this is alternating current. Think of it as, you know, as it goes up and down and up and down and around and around like a circle. So 2 pi reminds us of, of that. Uh, now if you think about this as frequency increases, gets larger and larger because it's a 1 over the frequency, then the capacitive reactions, reactance actually gets smaller and smaller. Let's just substitute in our values. We're going to have 1 over 2 times 3.14 times 10 kilohertz, if we're putting this on our calculator, it's 10 to the third times our, our capacitance is 1 microfarad, that's 1 to the negative 6, 1 uh, EE to the negative 6 on your calculator. And if we put those in and do the calculation, it turns out we get 15.92. Now what do we measure these in? Well, since it's like a resistance, we're going to also measure it in ohms. So we have our capacitive reactance 15.92 ohms. Now let's do inductive reactants. Formula for that, X of L, X sub L, is 2 pi F L. Now again, the 2 pi comes from the fact that it's alternating current. It's like a circle going around and around. But this time, notice as the frequency gets higher and higher, the inductive reactance gets higher and higher. It gets higher, harder and harder for the current to flow, which is exactly what inductors do. So we'll plug in our numbers. We have 2 times 3.14 times 10 to the third, EE to the th 3 times our inductance is 1 millihenry, 1 EE to the negative 3. Calculating that, we get 62.83, also ohms. Now if you notice, uh, both of these reactances, but they act in a kind of an opposite way. They, they work against each other. If we take into account that this is alternating current, we say that they change the phase. And we have a little saying to remind us of, of this. A little saying in electronics called Eli the Iceman. And what that means is E stands for voltage, I for current, L for inductance, C for capacitance. So what it's saying is in an inductive circuit, one in which there's more inductive reactants than capacitive reactants, the current lags behind the voltage, or the voltage leads the current. That's Eli. Voltage leads the current. On the other hand, in a, capac in a circuit where the capacitive reactants is more than the inductive reactants, that's the ice part of this saying, then the current leads the, the voltage or the voltage lags the current in a capacitive circuit. So in our case, what we have is, a, is an inductive circuit, the Eli case, where the voltage is going to lead the current. To figure out the impedance, the impedance is the combination of resistance and reactance. So we're going to subtract 
the capacitive reactance from the inductive reactance in this case because that's the capacitive reactance is less than the inductive reactance. So we take 62.83 ohms minus 15.92 ohms to get a total of 46.92 ohms. And that's our overall reactance. So we could write that. I'll write that there and erase those other numbers. Now to determine how much uh, opposition to the current flow is in the circuit, we can't just add this reactance, the 46.92 ohms, to the 33 ohms of the resistance because they're not in the same phase. We ha have to take the phase into account. So to do that we're going to use a graphical representation. And we're going to let, on, these, uh, on this graph, we're going to let the horizontal line represent the resistance, which in this case is 33 ohms. So if we draw a line representing those 33 ohms of resistance on the horizontal axis. The vertical axis going up is capacitive in reactants and going down is inductive reactants. Uh, that's just the convention everybody uses. So we're going to, since we have an in, a greater inductive reactance, we're going to draw our line representing our reactants going down on the vertical axis. That line represents the 46.92 ohms of reactants, in this case inductive reactants. Now what we need to find is the combination of those two. In essence it would be this line, but if we think about this, this is uh, we could just uh, flip that line to complete the triangle. So it would look like that. And that line represents the impedance. We use the letter Z to abbreviate for impedance, and it represents the combination of resistance and reactants in the circuit when we take into account that they're in different phases. So how do we calculate what the impedance is? Well, if you, if you remember the Pythagorean theorem, then this impedance line is going to be the square root of the resistance squared plus the reactance squared. And then if we put our number, if we put our numbers in, we get 33 squared plus 46.92 squared, which totals up to 3,290.48. And taking the square root of that, we get 57.36, also measured in ohms. So that's our impedance. Once we know that, we can use that value to say that's really how much the circuit feels like uh, is resisting the current flow. So we can use that to figure out how much current is flowing in the circuit. And how do we do that? Well, if you remember Ohm's law, it's V over I times R. However, we'll use Z instead of R because Z really represents what the total opposition to the current. So Ohm's law would be so Ohm's law becomes V over I times Z. And if we substitute our numbers in, we have 12 volts divided by 57.36 ohms for a total of 209 milliamps. And that's how you solve RLC circuits with impedance, how you find the impedance and then use the impedance to find parameters like the current flowing through the circuit. So that's how you solve these kind of circuits. Have fun with impedance.